So what do you get when you put some players together with some money? Why, you get another buyout, of course. Buyouts, buyouts, more buyouts, and hey, how about some buyouts? Welcome back, guys. MTG Moxman here. Thanks for hanging out with me today. So we're talking about buyouts, everyone. Can you believe it? More reserve list buyouts. And they seem to be speeding up. A lot of low-end reserve list cards are being bought and purchased. I'll show you some of the sales stats today, some of the figures where we're looking, some of the cards that have been hit, although this is probably not all of them, just the ones I could find out about in time for this video to give you guys a synopsis of what may be happening on the secondary market. If you've ever seen that movie Ice Pirates from like the 1980s, you know, whoever controls the most ice in the world, because ice is like, you know, a frozen form of water, they control the universe. Well, it's getting down to that point with reserveless cards. People are trying to corner the market, their corner of the reserve list, whatever card they like, knowing that eventually, in theory, if you control that entire market, if you control the majority of what's going on out there, it's yours. You delegate the price for anyone who ever wants that card in the future. And if you're young enough and bold enough, it probably will work. It makes me wonder how far this could go. So I looked at all this stuff. I thought about it, mulled it over. You know I like to give my opinion on this stuff. It's, it's reserve list conversation. I love this conversation topic. And it seems to be really speeding up. So here are some of the sales stats. Let's, let's look at the stuff I got as of this would be, this video is on Monday, March 20. You're probably watching a couple of days later. It took me to put everything together. But here we go. First off, Mammoth Harness. In the last five days, 147 copies on TCG Player and a few other sites kind of added all together. You know, eBay and stuff. But that's what I got. Plus a few sales locally from the guys who got the information back to me in time. 147 sales. All right. That's significant, okay? It's not a great card, but it was pretty cheap and easy to get. It's like $2.50 here in Canada. At my local shop, if I want to buy it, they still had some in stock. But you see what I mean? It's a lot of sales for a very low-end reserveless card. But we don't know the attrition rate. If they're buying the near-mint copies... And all that's left is moderately played or heavily played copies. Anyone who wants to complete a set in the future, anyone who wants a near mint version of that card 25 years from now has to go through whoever just bought those cards. It's fascinating to me if they think it'll work, if they think they can pull it off. Now the next one. Here we have second chance. 419 copies in eight days. This is like that time walking one, you know, one blue, two other, enchantment. If you have five or less life, you get to take an extra turn. Sack it. Get extra turn. Look at all the copies sold in the last eight days. That's 419 copies. Between an average price point between $7 and $15. That is literally thousands of dollars spent. But depending if you're using cashback credit card, TCG point system, maybe an eBay buyback, you are saving some money and you are cornering the market on a whole bunch of cards from a very old set. Urza Block's kind of crazy, right? All right, so that's our second chance. Now, if we go ahead and we jump into stuff like Humility, which I mentioned on the channel, I finished a few more sales, but 237 sales in seven days. And that card really shot up in price. You can see, look at that spike on that map. Look at that grit. It's going ching and went straight up. Because again, that card actually has uses. I've seen it used in Commander before. People, you know, turn everything into one ones and then wipe the board clean. Okay, keep that kind of stuff in mind. Time Elementals can unsummon this stuff. Remember Time Elemental? You remember Time Elemental. But the sales, guys, the sales. All right. Ancestral Knowledge. I mentioned this a couple weeks back when it had hundreds of sales. Another 117 sales in five days, and they really picked off more near-mint copies. A lot of near-mint copies are being picked up. It's fascinating, right? Because when a restock happens, my data is really starting to point to the fact that a near-mint copy is very hard to find it back on the market. And when you do, it is commanding a premium because those stores are seeing what the other copies are going for and they are pricing their copy accordingly. Keep that stuff in mind, okay? It's expensive. It's gonna be very expensive. Hey, how about this one? Energy Bolt, 193 sales in eight days. Remember, you know, gain some life, do some damage. I get it, old school card. Not very expensive though, couple of bucks. Low end reserve list cards. It doesn't take a lot to do damage like this and just poke a hole, chip away the ice and carry it off. And if you're willing to sit on this for 10, 15, 20 years, 
and you don't care, you're like, ah, I'm just doing it for fun, who knows? But look at all these sales I'm showing you guys on buyouts happening across the board. How about Soldevi Excavations? In the last two days, out of the blue, this is the buyout card I've named up on the channel. 57 more sales in the last couple of days. Who's doing that? Because it, it's not me. It's not me. It's not the people on my Patreon. I don't know who's doing it, but somebody bought a lot of copies. I think two of those sales might be mine, buying some near mint copies for my collection. But who did the rest of them? Fascinating, isn't it? People are out there poking away at the reserve list. These sales are real. What's happening is real. Whether people are like it or not, or want to acknowledge these cards are worthless or worth money, however you look at it, the sales are real. The data is solid. These cards are selling. Now, how about this one? Let's, let's end things off here. What do we got? All right. Remember Wandering Mage? Well, in the last 30 days, over 470 plus copies have been sold across all the platforms I track, including stores, because even though they weren't probably part of the original buyout, people have come in and bought it because they found it cheap inside some bulk bins. Thank you to uh, uh, Nacho King JJ, who sent that one off to me and bought 26 copies in a bulk bin for about 50 cents a copy, give or take. Pretty amazing, right? That is a lot of sales I'm tracking on a lot of stuff. But with these amount of buyouts happening, and if they continue all the way through 2022, imagine what some of these prices could end up looking like. And I'm not trying to get the whole FOMO wheel starting here. Fear of missing out. You either care or you don't. You either care about older reserve list cards like this, or you don't care. But imagine there's a person out there who just wants to get one of every reserve list card. And they're starting with the low end stuff but the low-end cards start costing $20, $30 each. It could happen. I hate to think of it that way because I predicted a very, like, you know, a long time, 10, 12 years to really start drying things up. But the accelerated rate in which people are spending money to buy these cards and definitely hitting the near mints, um, near mints, sounds like I said mints, it's, it's pretty brutal. And it's not going to end anytime soon. So if these sales continue and different targets keep getting hit, yeah, this is like eight cards I've showed you today out of what, seven cards out of 572? Still a percentage point, isn't it? Still lots of copies. And things like Wandering Mage have not really cycled back into the market. Some of these cards, now they've been bought, they're having a hard time finding the stock. The restock has not happened on a lot of these cards yet. And when it has, it's very minimal. Things like Soldevi Excavations took like 90 days to kind of restock. And I expect the rest of these cards to take that 90 days as well. They don't get restocked right away. And when you look at these sales and you say 300 is insignificant in the big scheme of things, you're right. It is insignificant in the million plus cards, the 250,000, the 140,000, whatever the print run may be for that card, you're right. 300 will seem minuscule. It will seem insignificant. But when you look how many stores got wiped out and how many stores got bought, the person hits 50 stores, 30 stores, online platforms, whatever. He just, he wipes out from a whole bunch of retailers at the same time. Those retailers will have to look again. People at home will have to start going through old bulk they may have. If they kept any. To restock that. Again, attrition rates are not known. We don't know how much damage has actually been done to old school penny card reserve list stuff. So when somebody's out there trying to collect something and you say, oh, it's worthless, remember, it's already happening and it doesn't matter what you personally think. The person buying has decided it is worth their time and worth their efforts to buy that card. So that's happening and it's here. And when they wipe out 20 or 30 online platforms, those online platforms, some of those people will never restock it. They don't have it anymore. They just, they didn't have it anymore. And it's not as if tons of old bulk reserve list cards get traded in very often. They usually end up in the hands of collectors, not stores at this point. Stores get less and less unless a whole collection comes into them. But then it'll be at the new marked up, jacked up price that's, you know, double bonus, triple cappuccino style, right? Taco King. You know, it's gone up. So you're going to hold it at that price level because you may have paid a little extra for that bulk when they bought it. I think the next several years of these kinds of buyouts happening are going to force a lot of cards up in price.
whether they like it or not, whether it's worthless or not. It doesn't matter if it's pricey. It doesn't matter. It's going to go up. And as it rises, all boats go up with it, which means other reserve list cards go up. Metal Worker is forced up because a card like Soldevi hits 50 bucks. Well, Metal Worker can't be 150 then. If Soldevi Excavations is $50, if City of Shadow hits 300 well, th these cards have to go up then. Exactly. All boats rise with the tide, right? Everything goes up. Question is, how long will it keep going before there's just not enough to go around? That will be the question that I can't wait to talk to you guys about as the years march on on this channel. All the people contacting me with this information, you guys are awesome. The ones giving me the numbers and the sales list so I can actually track this data, you guys are fantastic. I have so many spreadsheets, it blows my mind and I love it. Yeah, we are in for a great time. And I can't wait till the middle of April. It's gonna be a good month. It's gonna be exciting. You guys are awesome. Thank you everyone for tuning in today. Take a few moments, pause. Hey, pause Brown, ah, he's a great YouTube channel, you should check him out. But pause for a second, P-A-U-S-E, and say, is there any cards I wanted to get that I haven't bought yet? Because if there are, you never know which card's gonna be hit next. You might wanna spend that four, eight, twelve dollars to get your play set of four. Because I've noticed, even things like Thrall Champion, Look for a near mint throw champion. Treat yourself. It's not five, ten bucks, is it? All the moderately played ones are two, three, four dollars still. But look up the near mint ones and tell me what that price looks like to you. And it's a Fallen Empires card. Go team throw. Guys, thanks a lot for tuning in today. Thanks for hanging out with me once again on the channel. Can't wait to talk to you all tomorrow. Have an awesome day. Have a magic day. Have a reserve list magic day. Because it's going to be awesome. And of course, a big shout out to all my patrons out there. Patrons make the world go round. And if you're using TCG Player as one of your platforms, please don't forget to use my affiliate link found in the description of all my videos. Go patrons! Hey guys, what's up? You made it. Oh, there we go. There we go. Little negate action. Little negate action going in the 10K box just for you guys. Guess what, by the way, if you're here at the end of the video, look, look, we actually got some subs. We only need 180 subs, gonna have a little 8K party, gonna have a little fun. It'll be a special live stream, we're gonna kick back and relax. Because we're that close to getting to 8K, then we're only 2,000 away from getting to 10. It's gonna be awesome. I can't believe we're that close though, that close. This 10K box may get opened one day. 10K. Can't wait, man, it's gonna be awesome. All right, guys, hope you're rocking your day wherever you are in the world of magic. Don't forget to bring a friend to magic, and yeah, reserve list buyouts. It's happening. See you guys in April. Have a great one, everyone.